वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल फाइव मिनट इकोनॉमिक्स वेर आई टीच इकोनॉमिक कॉन्सेप्ट इन स्पैन ऑफ जस्ट फाइव मिनट्स सो टूडेज टॉपिक इज परी टू एफिशियंसी एंड थ्योरी ऑफ सेकेंड बेस्ट सो इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट वट एग्जैक्टली इज परी टू एफिशियंसी और परी टू ऑप्टिमैलिटी द कंडीशन फॉर परी टू एफिशियंसी अलॉन्ग विद द प्रोडक्शन पॉसिबिलिटी कर्व एंड देन आई विल बी मूविंग टू द थ्योरी ऑफ सेकेंड बेस्ट विद सम एग्जाम्पल्स एंड डायग्राम सो या लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड so coming to pareto efficiency pareto efficiency is the most efficient point we can ever be at it is also known as the theory of first best or a state of economic nirvana it was developed by wilfredo pareto and hence the name pareto efficiency coming to the definition it is the condition when no individual can be better off without making at least one individual worse off so since we are at the optimum stage we have to make at least one individual worse off to make one individual better off two things which should be noted are that resources here are economically efficient and the consumers are rational and aim to maximize their utility moving further to the three conditions of pareto efficiency these conditions are repeatedly asked in many examinations so make sure you remember them by heart the first one being efficiency in exchange this is from the consumer point of view Here we have MRS XY for consumer A is equal to MRS XY for consumer B. So this MRS stands for marginal rate of substitution. This means that when a consumer wants to increase the usage of one commodity, he has to reduce the usage of another commodity so that the utility he derives remains just the same. Second one is efficiency in allocation of factors of production. This is from the producer point of view. Here we have MRTS for firm A. LK is equal to MRTS LK for firm B, where L and K stand for labor and capital, respectively. So MRTS is the marginal rate of technical substitution. This means that when the producer wants to increase the quantity of one input, he has to reduce the quantity of another input so that the output remains the same. Lastly, we have efficiency and product mix, which is the amalgamation of the first two conditions. MRTS XY is equal to MRS XY. So thus, these are the three conditions for Pareto efficiency. Moving further, I'll be explaining to you the concept of Pareto efficiency with the help of a production possibility curve. Here we have two consumers A and B, and we have a production possibility curve PP. We notice that all the points lying on the PP curve, that is B, E, D, F, and C, are Pareto efficient. Any point which is inside the curve, which is A. or outside the curve which is h are not pareto efficient however the utility derived on each point might vary for example on point d we notice that both a and b derive the same amount of utility that is 50 50 whereas on point e or point b we notice b derives more utility than a whereas at point f or point c we see that a derives more utility than b so this is about the concept of pareto efficiency Moving ahead to theory of second best. So theory of second best was developed by Lipsey and Lancaster in 1956. This theory states that when we cannot get the first best, we opt for the second best. So this is a condition very true in real life as well that when we cannot achieve the first best situation in our life, we move to the second best. So when we are unable to satisfy the three conditions of Pareto efficiency, we need to go to the second best option we might need to move inside the ppc for that i'll explain this theory with the help of this diagram so here we see we have our production possibility curve pp which is in red next we have a constraint line cc which is in blue and then we have our three ic curves that is the indifference curves w1 w2 and w3 which are drawn and we know that higher the curve or more is the satisfaction okay so here seeing the diagram we see that a point h which lies on the highest level of the indifference curve is a pareto efficient point that is point h but due to some constraint in the market we see on our cc line we cannot go beyond this line so we see that we stick to point e which is the second best point at this point the cc curve intersects the w2 curve and this is our second best point so this is what theory of second best states so lastly i'll explain the theory of second best with the help of an example 
So for example, I need to make chocolate mousse and to make chocolate mousse, the two ingredients which I need are dark chocolate and fresh cream. Due to some scarcity in the market, I do not have fresh cream available. Now what do I do? Do I make chocolate mousse with just the help of dark chocolate? Maybe the mousse I make is not liked by people or maybe I suffer a loss. Or the second best option is that I use dark chocolate and make a product which doesn't require fresh cream like maybe chocolate pudding or chocolate cookies and that is the second best option. In real life too, government uses this theory. So what happens, I'll just give you an example, sometimes there is a lot of import in the market. When there are a lot of imports and a lot of supply, what happens is the price falls. Now the price has fallen and the domestic producers, what do they do? They don't want to supply more and they want to cut down their variable cost and in doing so they tend to fire their employees. Now this is not a good thing that people are becoming unemployed. So what does the government do? The government has two options. It can either use the domestic policy or the trade policy. If it uses the trade policy, it can implement tariffs and you know, reduce the imports or it can also use the domestic policy that is give uh, you know, subsidies to the domestic suppliers so that they also don't suffer. So these theories of second best and Pareto efficiency are used in real life as well. And this is all about Pareto efficiency and theory of second best. Hope you did find this video useful. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next video pretty soon.